We'll pay the money to keep the road from getting destroyed right here. I'd rather not have to spend quite a few turns climbing that hill again. All right, Mr. Christopher Newport, who is rather Englishly named. He has 33 strength. He would be able to take down our merchant man. He can move at 7 per turn. I don't think he has rain movement cost reduction, which he does not have. Navigation 2 only does movement range. So we should be able to escape him. We are going to need a defensive ship now. Or to be very careful with how we move around. Yeah, we need to pull this privateer. Oh, we're actually we're close enough that we can probably engage this guy in the next turn. Yeah. So we need to position ourselves in such a way that we are northern defensive. That we can catch him if he moves that direction. I think there's a good chance that he'll try to take the fight on us. So we, so we want to be in a defensive posture as well. Let's pick this unfavorable wind right here. We might have some movement speed left over. No, we don't. Oh, English Caravel. You have navigation too, so if you go north, we can catch you as well. Yeah, this must be the English. I'm sure Mr. Newport is in no way from a place such as York. Borders expanded in quite a few places simultaneously. Let's see how the crow feel about us. Only minus one for stolen land. Incredible. Another missionary. This one is, however, very far away from the colonies. 43 turns to get to Ehartsar. There's a expert farmer, Ihak Tawan, with the, I think these are the Sioux. Yeah, the Sioux. I'd like to set up a mission there. We can just keep producing expert farmers over and over. I am kind of wondering about the long-term viability of the Sioux, though. They are not going to be anywhere near as easy to deal with as the crow. But if we can get pretty free expert farmers, we might as well take it. Right, it is the end of the turn. I'm not going to spend any gold. I'm just going to keep some gold on hand. And we're going to see how this plays out. See if their privateer comes at us or not. They chose not to. Interesting. Alrighty, we have arrived in Africa with a bunch of horses to sell. And some furs. Well, not furs, but premium coats. It's a good, good deal of money. Only 150 gold for an African slave. That's pretty good considering the amount of food these guys can produce as fishermen. I'll keep the ship here for the moment and come back to it once I know what I want to do at the end of the turn. Alright, another converted native. This one, maybe we can use him as like the foundation for the settlement right here. Or maybe we can send him over to the eastern island over here. He could do some wild bird feather collecting. I need to quickly look up exactly what those things do. Pretty sure they're loons, so they produce wild bird feathers. And wild bird feathers, they're used for the production of lined goat skin boots. I don't think that we have much, if any, goat production. Although it's a wetland hill, right? Oh, damn it. Gotta remember all the little livestock locations. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Yeah, wetland hill, marsh hill, shrub hill, taiga hill. So we could do some goat production. We could do some goat production in rusty clam, actually. Or clay, don't know yet for sure. We need clay, that's for sure. But yeah, let's send that converted native over to Red Fox. I think that we want to use him to set up the colony right here. I wonder if he's better at fruit production. Or he can just go hunting, do whatever with his life. Hmm, I'm analyzing the positions here, and I think the AI made a mistake. I think it would be smarter to settle one north in order to have access to the mackerel right here that is within range. Yeah, that's two away, so we could have access to mackerel. And that is a base for food production for an ocean tile. A regular fish tile? I think that starts with like three. Yeah, this shallow coast fish right here starts with just two. The big like deep water fishes, they give a lot of food, but it's pretty rare to be able to reach them. Our trapper also finished learning his skill. He's going to catch a ride from the caravel in not too long. And the road between Boggy, Boggy Bay and River of Pigs is almost done. Yeah, we had the question of what to do with this barbarian. This thing is kind of hard to see without a black flag. Our odds right now are 73.4% chance of survival. That's not great. He has a natural plus 10% from tile defense. 
And I think what we're going to do is just hunker down with our merchant man and take cover. Let's actually go trade with uh, Ashi Nadia. The native mercenary can actually probably get off the boat right here and help defend Rusty Clam. For that, let's clear out this little wolf right here. That's some easy, easy experience. Get wrecked. Oh, she doesn't want to sell her premium fur. That's weird. What about your regular fur? You will take this, okay. What about a defensive pack since we have not declared war on anybody? You would take that good deal. Our odds of killing this guy is only 4.9%. So I want to get really in his face and encourage him to attack us because he should have basically the same odds. And there we go. We now are at the end of the turn so I can decide what to do next. Considering that we have a privateer, we may wish to get a proper military ship. Sadly, with only 3,500 gold, I'm not sure that we can get a real military ship that can take on a privateer. We have a galleon that's going to arrive in about three turns if we wait. But we've also got the Carrick coming, and the Carrick is, I think, one turn away? Yeah, one turn with lots of gold. We should be able to buy a military ship when he arrives. Alright, and village well done in Red Fox. Now we must consider what to work on next. I think that ideally we'd like to upgrade our fur production. Our coat production. Man, I mix those two up all the time. Our coat production. We've got the stone, we've got the clay. We're just going to need tools. And we need tools for most of the, like pretty much all the upper secondary level houses and buildings. I think we'll start fur trading post production now. But getting the tools there is going to take some time with this freaking privateer. Storage house is done in Boggy Bay. That's actually very good. We needed that. We are running a little bit negative on food. We'll be out in eight turns. If necessary, we could always just pull the powder keg guy out. What are we going to go with next in Boggy Bay? We could try to go towards weaving, but that's going to be a little while, especially with spending a lot of our gold on a military ship coming up here in a second. Maybe we just build a tavern, make everybody happier. And that'll actually make money from our culture generation. Besides that, I think going up to a town hall would make sense so we could then get a lumber mill. Although we did just get a vintager in Europe, so we might want to start wine production here. And wine does have a demand here as well. Ooh, it does. I knew it did in Red Fox, I was pretty certain of that. Wine production would be quite nice. I think we should do a vintager's house and then see if we can't get somebody to do a bit of great picking here. Oh, but man, we have a uh, quite a negative food supply. Oh, there's nothing I can really do about that though, other than get more fishermen here. Yeah, let's just do the vintage's house next. Butcher's house done in River of Pigs. I think now maybe we push this colony up towards... No, let's finish the tavern next actually. Oh, our law and order is not great. That's because we don't have anybody preaching. Perhaps we build a chapel then, and that'll actually naturally help with the law and order. I do like the idea then, let's do that. I, I would consider, I would accept this guy working as a preacher and not a medic, because they're actually very valuable. Some Hessian mercenaries are looking for a new contract. They have a strange demand that they only work for the country with the best sausages. So we have to build butcheries in five of our cities to convince them to come to us. Well, Hessians are really strong units. But five cities, five cities building butcheries is a lot of investment. And we're being challenged to have at least five fur trappers. Those are the ones that do premium fur. Maybe. Alright, here we go. We got a bunch of money. I'm not sure that we can get a proper frigate, though. Uh, we're just short. Just short. Maybe I can go with somebody else. Uh, let's do a little bit of exploration. Maybe we'll get lucky. Since the enemy privateer is very intent on not engaging our privateer, let's just go harass that caravel if we can find it. It probably got away by now though. We we're not able to find it this turn, maybe another turn. Alright, road is done between Boggy Bay and River of Pigs. Next up is going to be a pig pen. Uh, I'm so close to what I need for money. Let's ask the Portuguese. I think I need 145 gold. Let's see if they want to be buddies. Oh, I can't just ask them for help. Never mind. Yeah, let's just wait one more turn and then we'll pick up the military ship then. I really don't want the character to come back by itself. 
Yeah, let's just wait. Good lord. Our colonies are growing fast, but administration leaves a lot to be desired that's unacceptable. Therefore, His Majesty has decided to appoint a vice regent for your colonies in order to regain control. So, lose 4,000 gold, gain one governor. Not a bad thing, considering how many Liberty Bells this guy's going to produce. L decrease maximum tax rate to 20, uh, 58%, which is great. And our relations with our king go up. Not bad, not bad. Or, receive 500 gold and... The king gets upset. Go ahead and we'll pay the money. We do have a bunch of gold coming in on a galleon in a second here. Oh, come on. I just spent a lot of money. What is this? What is this? The king wants to send an architect. Really? 5,000 gold receive one eccentric architect. I, I assume this guy like builds really well. Ugh. So we lost that relations, but we gained some money. So actually we lost 3,500 gold, but we did gain a governor. Ooh, Bartolome de la Casas. We get one Orthodox missionary plus 50% native conversion rate for missions and plus one movement rate for Orthodox missionaries. That is really, really good. I think that's only specific for, well, I think Orthodox missionary is our, is a job title and it's like, no, I think there's a difference between our missionaries, regular missionaries and the special ones. I'll take them, yeah. 20 gold for five furs no thank you stop coming and offering me bad deals please i just i just no 500 gold for 125 fur no okay 36 gold for 12p no literally I, I haven't played in the amount of time that you saw that that was just them coming constantly and bothering us all right mr governor let's appoint you in red fox and you now produce 10 liberty bells on your own 200% Liberty Bell Protection Modifier. Uh, that poor king, his governor, is actually going to make us even more revolutionary. The governor probably got here and was like, man, this is a nice place. Alright, Mr. Orthodox Missionary, we are still being bothered. Hello. Privateer went into the channel right there. Or the bay. It's too bad we can't hem him in completely. Unfortunately, the galleon arrives in one turn, so we need to just wait here in Europe a little while longer. This orthodox missionary, I can have him walk somewhere pretty rapidly, since I cannot go by the ocean. It would be 7 turns to a fog neck, or I could do 5 turns to Esekep Kapuk. I'll do that one. I want to get this roper to work, but crime is a bit of a problem here. Uh, maybe instead of fur trading post, we do village courthouse into fur trading post. Have the roper help. Uh, we're net zero on lumber here. Okay, we don't want to do that in that case. I guess the best thing is for him to just stand around then. At least until we get the courthouse built. We have the king's representative story. That is because we got the governor. Alright, chapel built in River of Pigs. Let's get the free colonist doing his job there. And then after that, I think that we can grow geese on wetlands. I need to double check that. For now, we'll set it to Town Hall. And we sold all the gold on that galleon, so we can finally get our proper frigate. Could save up a little bit more for a ship of the line, but that'll be a lot of money. Let's go for frigate. Our frigate is our best chance to take the enemy out. Go ahead and send the frigate right now. Now let's wait a moment. He can carry some passengers. I think. I need to double check that. Goods or troops? Gotcha. So never mind, he'll go on his way back home. Yes, flatlands, wetland, or taiga. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wetland right here. Oh wait, I can't, it's occupied, right? No wait, why can't I take it? 73% crow, that might be it. Although we currently possess it right here, I guess I need to have a colonist work that tile. There we go, let's grab that tile. Have the fisherman go back to what he was doing, and now we can make geese and we can make pigs. The butcher's house allows for both of those to happen at the same time. So then what we would need would be a, I think it's a leather worker house to make the boots. Not the boots, but the lined leather clothes. Oh, they use cow hides and down. Oh, that's not it. Uh, what do you use pigs for? I know that there's pig leather aprons, but they don't usually sell very well. It might be something like field worker tools that uses pigs. Yeah, hardwood and pig skins. 
Alright, I'll take that tile anyway. We might do pigs or we might do geese on it. I'm not sure which yet. Let's actually build a shovel de free for an extra free happiness that doesn't cost almost anything. And then after that we may go with a... I'm thinking a tavern actually. Yeah, let's do that next after the shovel de free. So you can combine pig skins with hardwood to make field worker tools at the village market into any other market building. And those do sell decently well. So we'll probably be doing that since we do have some access to hardwood around here. Let's actually send the Master Roper and the Converted Native together to that settlement site. Which means we'll go ahead and we uh, we can't yet set him up because we don't have the tools, that's right. I wish this privateer would leave me alone. We do have access to some grassland in River of Pigs, I just now noticed. So I could pull off some actual hemp planting. Check that out. So he can finally do his job. It's not perfect. It's not the island hemp planting, which would be a lot more efficient. But it'll do. Now that we are making some hemp, I might actually keep that roper where he's at then. He'll just do his job at some point later on. Good lord. Oh. They got a royal frigate. We are probably done for, guys. There goes a lot of money. That damn war. If it hadn't have been for the war, they wouldn't have gotten the option to get troops. They must have gotten it back then. I guess they get the option one way or the other when they get declared on. Or maybe they get more troops. I think they get more troops if you get troops as well to help balance it out. Alright, let's make the assumption that the frigate takes down the enemy privateer. So let's get a... Probably going to be a household goods trader to make those field worker tools. We also need another Siberian Lumberjack. That guy needs to cut the hardwood. So Siberian Lumberjack. The har household goods guy is going to be pretty expensive. Let's just take the Lumberjack now. Because we are actually having a few issues with lumber again. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to buy any goods for sale domestically. I'd rather spend the money on expanding our economy. Although if I buy the goods, I do make money naturally. I think most of the domestic prices are pretty equivalent to European prices, so we wouldn't make much money bringing those back, so we're not going to do that. We're just in the galleon back as is. I don't think we need anything else. Could maybe use some more tools, but I'd rather spend the money on a blacksmith, so let's go back as is. Expert olive picker. Do we want to keep you as an olive picker? Don't know, but I'll go ahead and I'll decide that when we get back. And everybody should arrive at the same time, so the frigate will be in the front. And we'll just float this cash for now, I think. This privateer is choosing to do some blockade bullshit. Oh, no, he is running. Wait, we just won that fight against the royal frigate. We have the freedom to pray story. If you'd like to read it, here you go. No, 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 no. The royal navy wants one of our ships. Uh, no. I need the frigate to take on the privateer. My shipping is paralyzed until I deal with it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, King, but we're doing pretty good with you. We're bros for the most part. But now is the time to be like, no, no. Let them build their own ships. So a tragedy strikes just beyond our border. The Shoshone are upset. We could lose a lot of food to gain a relations bonus with a tribe that is like 30 turns walking away from us. We're not going to do that. That's too bad. I'm sorry. But I will take 21 peat. That's nice. 10.2 strength. This dude lived. He just fought a 55 strength ship that I'm pretty sure has some natural bonuses, like some natural promotions on it. Huh. I guess they don't start with any promotions. Oh, strength 50. That's still pretty damn powerful. This guy, I'm actually going to give him a special name. I'm going to call this the Iron Skin Rib PS289 in honor of one of my commenters that has commented quite a bit. I really do appreciate seeing all y'all's opinions and thoughts about the game or really anything in general in the comments. It's really cool to meet people that are uh, a little less close to normies. We can all be autistic together. Alright, so this guy could really use some actual strength or the ability to run away. I really think that he needs to be able to fight though if our closest neighbor is the English and they still have that royal frigate kicking around somewhere. He managed to get away. Because of that, I think Veteran 1 is going to be the way to go. So let's go up an all-around strength increase. Now we might not survive another fight 
So we should probably pull back while we are while we're still alive. And we'll just see if we can't pick off some English ships that are hanging around somewhere they shouldn't be. Alrighty, with a pig breeding pen finally taken care of, we can go ahead and start working on probably a lodge to increase our lumber production. We kind of need that. Although I do want to make these grasslands into tobacco or hemp producing locations. Yeah, let's move the lumberjack down slightly onto the hill right there and pull out right there and this grassland hill, we can make this into a lodge. Of course, moving on there is going to take forever. So he's at minus two movement points, so he's going to spend next turn and the next turn not doing anything. So this kind of presents like an interesting choice if you move into defensive terrain and you can't move fast enough to move on the next turn. Because if you move there, you're stuck there, the enemy can now maneuver around you. Interesting little tactical choice to make. I just checked the Europe screen and noticed that we were about to get an immigrant, so I'm going to quickly take the master blacksmith right here. I'd rather pick... Oh my goodness, oh master carpenter, I want him next. The tobacconist is pretty good too, and the charcoal burner is going to be great since we already have a powder guy. And a free colonist I'll never turn down. So this is actually a very good assortment. We don't yet have tobacco, but we'll have access to tobacco potentially pretty soon. We have the protecting your people story. I think this is probably related to having multiple Shero de Free. And City Bull once again wants a defensive pact, I'll take that. Alright, our frigate has arrived and it is ready to attempt to pounce potentially, but I do need to escort our ships to safety. So we're going to send the Master Roper and the Vintager over to Boggy Bay. Expert Olive Picker, I don't think they're going to keep you around. They're better at fruit and grape production though, but I might as well clear her specialty and have her learn how to pick grapes properly. I think that makes a lot of sense. So clear that specialty. And you're going to be probably a grape picker in Boggy. We do need a lumberjack here, so that makes sense as well. We're going to need to import food though. The furthest the enemy privateer can move is right here, assuming that he had nothing blocking his path. So we're going to move to this location right here. And the Carrick should be safe at that point. To make that a safer move, we can have the Galleon follow that up. And the Galleon can just kind of like hang out with him. The Frigate, however, is going to go on the hunt. And we're going to get as close as we can. We cannot catch him though, but we can scare him away. Interesting question here. Do I risk, well, do I just give up the small coastal ship to get attacked by the privateer? But that allows us to catch the privateer and kill it. I'd rather not do that if I don't have to, so let's not. I'm going to apply the roper to be a judge temporarily. That does fix our little crime problem. And crime is something to not be intensely worried about, but it is annoying. He's actually attacking us. That's really stupid. We got the 14 coffee berries gifted to us from the crow. These guys are such good pals. Getting a little bit more upset about stealing their land, though. Let's go ahead and let's sink this bastard. He's got 1.3 strength left. This should be an easy, easy kill. The only question is, does he escape? And he did not. We actually killed him. Good deal. First privateer kill. Well done indeed. Hmm, the frigate. Let's name you after somebody as well. We shall call this the Stalwart Jayhawk WBA. Another one of the commenters that has been around for quite a while. And all iron skin rib PS made it into dock at Rusty Clam, so hopefully we'll be able to repair up and uh, consider what the hell to do since that royal frigate is still somewhere out there. So we have about 1,200 gold available to spend. The Siberian Lumberjack that we picked up recently is going to help with our lumber production, but it's not going to fix the problem entirely. And we're going to want more Lumberjacks to also work on hardwood production eventually. But first, we need more Lumber Lumber. So we're going to pick up another Siberian Lumberjack, if you would mind. That leaves us with 1,111 gold. Ooh, a magic number. Let's go with the Master Carpenter after that. I think that's a smart move. Puts us under the uh, 1,000 gold, but the chances of an event coming up that need that are kind of small, but you never know. I think it's worth the risk. Secondly, we cannot quite yet get the fur trading post up and running because our shipping was literally shut down. Now comes the question of what we should do 
in Red Fox next. I'd kind of like to consider maybe getting some fishing ships up and running. To get fishing ships, you need to build fishing boats, and fishing boats need rope, sailcloth, and tools. Now that we have a source of hemp, we can begin building fishing boats and getting food from the deep ocean. But it's going to be a little while until we can get the necessary ropes, I think. You know, it won't be that long, actually. Let's do a fishing boat next. Before I make the final decision on that, I will check the ocean to see if there's anything nearby. Vintager house done in Boggy Bay. Wouldn't mind building a tavern, but I also wouldn't mind building a town hall. Or, with that charcoal burner coming up in not too long, a powder maker house would be a very good selection as well. But with all the people that we're about to add, we do well to have some more happiness production. It just sucks that our only carpenter right now is just a failed trader. I say we build the tavern, that's going to really increase our happiness. That'll help support the colonist influx that we're about to have right now. Alright, so Lumberjack is going to go do his job on the... I think this is a hill up here. Mr. Crate Picker, if you wouldn't mind learning how to do that, please, so that I can have the Master Vintager do his job, but sadly we won't be able to supply enough to meet his demand. And then we have a Master Roper here, but we have... oh, we do have hemp. Do I have him do his job here, or do I have him... No, I wanted him here, and then I wanted a sailcloth maker in Red Fox. Like, one of each, ideally. So I think he should go ahead and work here, and we can make ropes from the hemp. The hemp, which of course came from River of Pigs. Oh, we also got a tavern built in River of Pigs, cool. With that, we're actually going to need a medical office. We're net zero on medicine, so we'll go with that. All we're... All right, stalwart Jayhawk, we're going to give you... This is one of those situations that at least one navigation promotion would be nice to have in order to catch people. So let's go with navigation one, and we'll just be happy with that for the moment. We'll get some more experience because we'll probably be duking it out with the English from time to time. Let's see how everybody's doing. You've got four settlements now, Mr. George Washington. The Portuguese are up to four settlements as well. I think the economic development has been slowed down quite a bit. That's cool to see. I like a slower pace. For y'all though, I do need a little bit of speed from time to time. Don't want y'all to get bored after all. But hey, if you made it this far, thanks. I'm glad you've enjoyed it so far. And don't feel like you have to watch. Like, and watch it if you enjoy watching it, you know? Nobody is required to stay. Alrighty, time to roll the dice on another uh, mission over at Essa Kep Kabuk. 87% chance of success. Hopefully we get it. And it looks like we did indeed. I think that puts us at about three missions in total so far. That are within Crowlands. Just got a converted native from Ehertzar. Maybe we'd like to train him in expert coffee planting. Looking at our lands, I don't think it's very likely that we're going to have access to coffee anytime soon, other than settling this colony eventually. But that's going to take some time. And I think I'd rather devote my efforts somewhere else. I think I'd like to go help the food issue in Boggy Bay, so we'll send him that direction. We got the tools for the fur trading post, we're going to upgrade that right now. That'll definitely increase our production of coats, which is going to make us a lot of money. Oh, we need more storage space here very rapidly. I am going to make use of this native slave that I found somewhere while exploring. Might as well, he'll become free naturally eventually. And we need more food after all. We've got 1,349 gold. We could pick one of our immigrants, but I'm actually okay with any of these dudes. And I'm not, I think it's because our shipping got shut down, but we're having a lot of immigrants pile up on the docks. Partially because our cross production went up of course, but we might need Maybe one more passenger ship, I'm not sure. I am kind of leaning in that direction though. So let's just save our money. We'll have a bunch of money being made from the treasure after all. The crew are offering us another settlement. We are at minus three for stolen land, but a lot of that will burn off, I'm pretty sure. Interestingly enough, establishing more missions with them hasn't really improved our relationship. I'm going to say no. I want Kaposia to stay around. Same thing with a fog neck. The stalwart Jayhawk is all repaired and ready to roll out, so here we go. We're going to send here towards the south. We are lucky enough to be in a position that it is very unlikely 
that the AI could approach us from any direction but the south. Alright, so Iron Skin, Rib PS, is also repaired. I think what we can do with this one is go on some exploration and then really get it well promoted. We can do exploration in such a way that we swing around the English through the fog of war over here.